Well, uh, no, there was no Hindu in Arabia. Mm. Uh, well, sometimes there were Hindu traders landing on the Arabian coast, and some of them certainly went on pilgrimage to the Black Stone in the Kaaba in Mecca. They must have heard of it. It was famous all over Arabia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it reminded them, of course, of the Shiva Lingams here in India. Mm -hmm. And so there was not, not so much difference, that is true. And of stone worship in India, that's not so much here in the, in the cities, but uh, in the countryside, in tribal areas, you do find stone circles. I, mean, I didn't know that before. It's only recently I learned of the work by this Debashish Das, who traces all the megalithic structures in India. And there are surprisingly many of them. You know, Stonehenge in England, in England, yes. Now in India, there are similar structures all over the subcontinent. And um, so, you know, th th this kind of worship existed. Now, stone worship was very big in Arabia, you see. And many deities that are known by name for the ancient Arabs, they were identified with one specific stone. And they went on pilgrimage to that stone. And, um, and so the Kaaba was the most famous one. I mean, the, the black stone in the Kaaba. Now, uh, that was not Shaivism, but yes, I mean, it was, it was something parallel. It was something recognizable. So Hindu traders went to worship the black stone in the Kaaba, just as Arab traders went to worship in the Somnath temple. The Shiva temple on the coast in Gujarat. Mm -hmm. So it was not a Hindu temple in the sense of the definition of Hindu. You know, everybody born in India who is not a Muslim and so on. Mm -hmm. Because the Arabs were not born in India. Okay, so mm -hmm. it was not Hindu. There was no, there was no Hindu going there to install that, that black stone. No, that black stone fell from the sky. In, in the desert in Arabia, and they thought, hey, you know, this is a gift from the gods. Come on, let's start worshipping it. And they built a little temple around it, and, and that's the Kaaba. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a parallel thing to religion that exists in India. And so it's recognizable. It is, at any rate, not Islamic. And so all the statues around it, Muhammad decided to destroy, 360 of them. And that is the example, the classic example cited by all the Muslim iconoclasts ever since. You know, like there is this story of um, uh, Al-Araki, some West Asian uh, preacher who came to Kashmir in the 14th century into to Gilgit and Balt Baltistan to be precise, which is now Pak occupied Kashmir, and it's very thinly populated. Yet, even there, you see, he destroyed hundreds of temples. And he says explicitly in so many words that, you see, this is following the Prophet Muhammad. This is following the example of what happened uh, with the Kaaba. So, um, so there is this contrast uh, between Islam and paganism that was already demonstrated in Arabia you know, in Mecca itself, before Islam came came into India, that is true. But so it's a it's a pagan thing. I wouldn't call it a Hindu thing. That would not uh, in that context, be precise. Pagan. Pagans are also Hindu, right? I mean, Hindus no. are also pagan. The other way around. You Hindus see, are, yeah. you don't you don't choose whether you are a pagan. Okay, yeah. you know, you have never written on any paper. You see, religion, pagan. You know. Uh, I, nobody calls himself a pagan. Now you see there are a few people in Europe who, <coughs> to distinguish themselves from Christianity, you see, to, to show that they are apostates from Christianity, they call themselves pagans. But I mean, after a few generations, that will disappear. And um, so you don't choose to be a pagan. So if Christianity calls you people pagans, well, yeah, well, let them, you know. I mean, if elephants hear that some scholars over there are calling them elephants, well, you know, what are they going to bother, you know? It's, uh, yes. And so, um, so Hinduism is the Indian form of paganism.